I'm Paula, and I'm here today to teach you about uh, alarm fatigue and maybe some ways to combat that, uh, combat that here in the nursing unit. So alarm fatigue is defined as typically triggered by a superset of false positive alarms and true positives. And what that means is that alarms go off that aren't really clinically significant. Uh, uh, two, in 2010, Graham and uh, Kovach said that alarm fatigue is defined as not responding to an alarm, and because of the, that poor response, you can have adverse patient events. So the problem is that there have been 12 uh, adverse events in this facility alone in the last 15 months, and five of those were because the wrong pa either the wrong monitor was on the wrong patient or the patient was in the wrong room. Joint Commission, back in 2013, identified 98 alarm-related um, events, and, and 80 of those ended in death. And so that was just in a short three-year span. And then in, uh, in Pennsylvania in 2008, uh, they identified 194 adverse events with uh, 12 patient deaths. So as you can see, alarm fatigue it can be a very uh, detrimental event for the patient. So the objectives today are to describe the importance of patient identification as related to the uh, tel telemonitor, uh, to describe when to communicate to the monitor check. There's a lot, a lot of uh, uh, inconsistency in communication among caregivers around the, the monitor, take it off and not call the tech, that type of thing. Uh, we also want to demonstrate correct lead placement because that alone can set off the alarms. And we want to describe the dangers of alarm fatigue and strategies to prevent the, the false alarms. That's what we're working on. So by policy from St. David's Medical Center, our continuous cardiac monitoring, uh, the, the responsibility of the nurse include uh, documentation of the rhythm changes and regular documentation uh, based on um, what they're told by the monitor tech, and then a timely assessment and intervention should something need to be intervened upon. Monitor techs are responsible for communi communicating the changes to the nurses, uh, as well as communicating when patients are off the monitor, when batteries need to be changed, or there's really any problem with the monitoring system. And any delay uh, must be documented in the patient's record. So if a patient goes to radiology, they're off for 30 minutes, the last thing we want to do is not call you know, until 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Minimal interruptions are part of this policy. It's the nurse's responsibility to ensure that the patient is being monitored at all times, and there should be minimal delays once you call. And we're going to review a decision tree in a few minutes to explain that more. So even if it's to check rhythm uh, changes, leads, or batteries, it's important that we respond. So information that must be communicated to the monitor tech uh, before before you uh, get the device is that you need to they need to know the uh, name, room number, date of birth. The diagnosis, briefly, code status, and whether or not there's a history of pacemaker or defibrillator. And that's important because they have different settings in the monitor to apply when that occurs. So, why do I get so many phone calls? You're the tech up on the unit, your phone's constantly reading about the monitors. And the problem is, is that when leads are off, as you can see, we can see no rhythm at all. And this is a dangerous situation for the patient. So, we're going to talk about correct lead placement. This is the lead uh, placement recommended by the manufacturer, and as you can see by the color coding, uh, it shows you exactly where to put the leads. And when you look at the leads, you can see that each one does have a color right there on the lead, so that you can use this picture to put it on the patient. And if you look at the telepath, this, this picture is there as well for your convenience. So the important thing to remember is that this green lead, uh, when this one is off over here, the, uh, the, the tech really can't see anything like we just showed you in the picture before. This is the, physio, uh, the physical location of the electrodes uh, on the torso as well from the GE uh, manufacturer. So tips for lead management and preventing false alarms include cleaning the skin daily uh, with soap and water before putting the leads on. Avoid using alcohol uh, as it can affect the ability of the, if they don't, the leads don't adhere as well. I'm going to change them every 24 hours after you bathe the patient. Place the electrodes over soft tissue and try not to get them directly on a bony prominence. That may give you more artifact and the, the monitor techs may call more often. And remember that the ground lead, the green lead is the ground lead and that when it's off we see basically a systole. So when do I call the monitor tech? Well, before you remove the tele box for any reason at all. Even if the patient's going home, you want to give them a call first. Uh, when a patient is transferred to another room, you definitely want to give them a call before you make the transfer and after the transfer is complete. I'm going to go through these steps again of identification. Uh, and after reattaching the monitor for any reason, let's say that your patient gets in the shower, they get back out, you put them back on, you call the tech to verify that you have a rhythm. And uh, certainly for any changes in patient code status as well. So this is our decision tree for the management of alarm fatigue. And basically we have two 
two tiers. This is part of our policy, and you can see that uh, on the continuous car rate policy, that if this is a, a potentially or actually life-threatening um, dysrhythmia uh, and meets uh, Dr. Leo criteria, the monitor tech will actually call and the code team will respond. If it doesn't meet Dr. Leo criteria, it will escalate very quickly to a rapid response situation to get someone up at the room to take care of the patient. If we see a leads off or battery change, that's going to be different. They're going to call the tech, give them a few minutes. If they don't get that fixed, we'll call the nurse, and lastly, we'll escalate that up to the uh, supervisor on the unit. And, and th what this is really all about is just trying to keep those uh, alarms from ringing, number one, and for preventing uh, alarm fatigue. So, in summary, Heather, I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Why is it important uh, to identify the patient who is on the telemetry monitor? We want to make sure that we have the um, right monitor on the right patient so we're not giving wrong meds or we're not providing incorrect interventions, as you perfect. stated. Perfect, perfect. Uh, when would you communicate with the monitor tech? When I need to take the monitor off, if they're getting in the shower, if they're changing a room, if I'm putting monitor back on the patient, I want to call the monitor text. Okay. Is there a change in code status? Anything like that. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, what about lead placement? Can you show me quickly where you would put leads on this on this patient? Yes. I am going to put the green one is the important one. That's the one that you told me. If it falls off, then I won't get a signal. So I'm going to put it right down here at the bottom of the rib cage and this white one is at the top of the inter second intercostal space so white green and then i have um, black and red okay. and then i have the brown and it's all going to go on the soft tissue not on the bony prominence that's perfect heather i can tell you we're paying attention <laughs> uh, and so what is what is the what is the danger around the alarm fatigue and um, that they will not um, respond quick enough so that we can provide intervention. The monitor text, if the alarms go off all the time, um, they may not respond as quickly um, as they would if, uh, uh, if just one or two alarms were going off. That's perfect. And what, just give me two strategies to prevent a false alarm. Um, one be, would be to call the monitor text whenever you're taking a patient off or okay. putting a patient back on, um, as well as making sure that we're cleaning um, and applying these uh, these on correctly. Perfect. Okay, very good. Do you have any questions? I don't. Okay, well, here are the references if you need more information, and if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you. Thank you.